Buenos dias, gente linda! <laughs> Today we're exploring the massive city of Teotihuacan. It is an ancient city which is located just one hour out of Mexico City. It is actually one of the top tourist destinations here in Mexico City. But today we are figuring out how to get there using public transport and how to get a completely free guide of this archaeological park. So later today we'll be heading back to Mexico City to find the most delicious Mexican food we can. Very unique. Very, very nice. <laughs> we made it to the bus terminal Del Norte in Mexico City and the tickets are 60 pesos to get to Teotihuacan. We got two return tickets so we just get the bus back as well. And now the bus is leaving in four minutes and we don't know where to go. Gracias. So the reason we're going by ourselves as well, catching the bus there and not taking a tour from Mexico City is the tours kind of start at like $50 per person. I think we can just do it a lot cheaper on our own. <laughs> So the bus ride ended up taking one hour and ten minutes and it dropped us right here and the entrance is right there. So super super convenient and just 60 pesos here and 60 pesos for the way home as well. It speaks Gracias. to me. Gracias señor. Oh, I'm not looking. I'm not looking. You have to look now. I'm not here. looking yet. Alright, I'm gonna look now because gotta get some distance to it as well. <laughs> Damn, it is huge! <laughs> oh, wow! Wow, that is quite the pyre, man. Damn! Got a bit of wheat growing now. Oh, well, it's very old, man. Yeah. Alright, do you got some fun facts for me here? Because I'm curious. I'll, I'll try to spread my fun facts throughout the video. But just on that note of it's very old, it was built somewhere between 100 to 200 years before Christ. No way! Yeah. Really? Yeah. Holy shit, so that is old! Excuse it's my English. very, very old, this pyramid. I'll share more throughout the video. I don't want to use up all my fun facts now. Let's try and keep this one a little bit interesting. Wow, that is old. Oh. Are we allowed to climb it? No, eh? No, you used to be able to, and it's then during COVID, tourists. they no, they during COVID they stopped it, and they haven't reopened it. Oh, bloody COVID. Ruined it for everyone. It looks so tiny in the camera, but I promise you it is so so massive we're standing right in front of it and well, i mean we're not right in front of it <sighs> okay there's, <laughs> there's like some local vendors selling those um toy whistles that make like eagle noises or jaguar noises and it's a bit freaky <laughs> yeah it's like a, somebody's gonna come yeah. attack us from behind <laughs> that's really funny like all right we should get moving this is quite a big uh park to walk around i think there's a lot to see and uh luckily we found an app that you can download for free Ooh. and it's an audio guide so you can take a guide from the from here you could come in a tour or you can download this free audio guide which is what we've done and yeah so that's how we're gonna learn about it it seems to move its body in a horizontal direction the head isn't visible possibly due to a smearing of the paint across the plaster over time and this avenue is avenue of the dead and the reason it's avenue of the dead i don't remember how do you say avenue in spanish calle 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 de Muertos. The reason that it's called that though is because there's all these temples alongside it. These were apparently they've learned now that they were all temples, but when the Aztecs actually found Teotihuacan, 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 they thought that these were all tombs. So that's why they called this Avenue of the Dead. So the Aztec didn't build this? No, the Aztecs didn't build this. So this was built before the time of the Aztecs and the Aztecs found it in the 7th century-ish. 
Look at you. I know. I'm not. I'm the Jacqueline. And they named it. So this is Teotihuacan is not the original name. It's what the Aztecs named it. And Teotihuacan means city of the gods or possibly where men become gods. I found two different answers to that one. I found my calling. <laughs> Finally, I am where I belong. <laughs> La Casada de los Muertos. I'm probably butchering that pronunciation, but there you go. So we've just walked to the Plaza of the Moon and that is the Temple of the Moon right behind us. And funny thing about that one is actually it was much smaller originally, but every time there was a governmental change, they would actually rebuild on top of the structure. So I believe there's like six layers of pyramids inside that pyramid. Every government wants to be bigger and better and all of that stuff. So yeah, originally it was much smaller. Most of the structures you can't climb or go on, but over here I can see some people walking. So it looks like we can actually go onto some of the structures, which is cool. Very unique. Very, very nice. I have a challenge for you. Oh yeah, I like it. I accept it. I want you to try and pronounce that. Quetzalpapalot. <laughs> oh, it's pretty good. Quetzalpapalotol. Quetzalpapalot. <laughs> I have no idea. Palace of Quetzalcoatl. When we refer to the Palace of Quetzalcoatl, we are only referring to a portion of a larger architectural complex in which the palace can be found. This luxurious palace is found just next to the Plaza of the Moon Pyramid and actually faces it, quite the scenic spot. Additionally, with the amount of effort that has gone into the decorative reliefs, it is clear that a high-ranking priest and noble once resided here. So this section is actually really cool because you can see like um, some of the old paintwork and the carvings in the columns which so you can kind of get like a bit more of an idea about what it actually looks like uh, whereas the rest of it is quite old and ruined but yeah this one it's really cool. Max is on maximum tourist vibes right now. He's got his tourist shirt. His cabin. backpack, this his hat, the camera, by, by the tourist mode activated. Oh yeah, full on. Uh, thanks to our amazing digital guide, we found out that very recently, in 2017 actually, um, thanks to the technology of taking photos under the... It's okay, thank you. Under the pyramid, they could actually see that there was a tunnel 10 meters below and 33 meters deep. Um, and they also found rem <coughs> remnants of skeleton. They had chopped off and the arms were tied behind the back. And they found jewelry on them. They said it indicates that they were from um, high society. They were of importance. I mean, I don't know how far you can see behind us, but we're at like the very northern end, right under the Pyramid of the Moon. And the Pyramid of the Sun is like all the way over there. Just like, it's so big. This place is so huge. And it's what we can see still. Yeah. So gonna, there's a lot more we don't know. Also, we'll put the link below in the description for this app because it's free and it's actually amazing. Big. It looks so heavy. Uh, it's like a whole mass of rock. Well, fun fact. Ooh. It is one massive rock. It's solid. Mm, solid. It's a solid structure. There's no openings or crevices inside. But like, is it like a like a natural mountain under them? No, they built it. Solid. Why don't you just put a mountain and put rocks on it? It's much easier. Because there wasn't a mountain there. Yeah, but it's not like a lack of choice around. Yeah, but they built them specifically. They positioned them specifically. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah. So, interesting thing is, is that this pyramid is either the ninth, the seventh, or the third largest in the world. <laughs> Depending on which website you go on online, I couldn't find exact 
I don't know which one was correct, but I'm gonna give you the stats that I found on Encyclopedia Britannica. Apparently it is 66 meters high. Yeah, I mean, I think it's big, but I feel like the pyramids of Giza. The pyramid of Giza is 136 meters high. So more than double this pyramid. Yeah. Well, look how big this is. It's already so big. Up all the way at the top of this pyramid, there used to be a temple, which is where they made the sacrifices. So you have to guess, because I've already done my research. Why do you think they made the sacrifices? Sorry, there's just a it's just puma a attacking walk. us. Yeah. Puma and jaguar. Um, my belief is that since they worship gods of elements, they would basically sacrifice hoping that they would ask for more rain, more wind, or at least more rain, more sun, and things like this. Yeah. So that's an idea. I think there's probably lots of reasons why they sacrifice, but the one that I read that I found really interesting online is that um, because they believed that the gods actually sacrificed themselves to create this world for humans. So they would then in turn have to repay the gods by then sacrificing mm -hmm. the humans. Yeah. A bit of a loan of interest basically, you pay your payment back for yeah, your loan. Yeah, like pay your dues basically. Okay. But yeah, so I just thought that was really interesting because it's kind of like all the other ones we've always read has been like, oh, you know, they sacrifice to bring the rains or the food or whatever it is. But yeah, I thought that one was cool. Like I sacrificed myself for her by sharing all my food because she eats more than me. <laughs> So the one tricky thing about using Polly Transport to get here is that on the way back, there's no bus stop, there's no bus sign, there's no indication, but we kind of just came to where we got dropped off and asked someone and they said this, yeah, it'll come in about five minutes right across the road. So pretty much where it gets dropped off, walk on the other side of the road and you'll see it. Let's wait and see. <laughs> we only had to wait six minutes, so perfect. And the bus has aircon. Same round back, very easy. So like I said earlier, to do a tour, they started about $50 per person. So in total, with all of our transport to get here, including the metro to get to the bus station and our tickets, we spent $41. So a hell of a lot cheaper than doing a tour. And we have the free guided tour anyway. Really good. So we couldn't wait, well Jacqueline couldn't wait and this lady jumped into the bus to sell stuff. Paletas. 20 pesos for homemade coffee. She had many other flavors. Alright, we found a restaurant for lunch. We came back into the city after the pyramids of course and we were really hungry so we kind of just stumbled into one of the closest restaurants that looked busy because we figure if it's busy, it must be good or at least reasonably priced, one or the other. And uh, I got really lucky with my order because I took a guess. I wasn't exactly sure what I was ordering, but it ended up being what I thought it was gonna be. So I had uh, chicken taquitos, or taquitos de polo, and they put us all these condiments and it looks amazing and I'm starving. Do you know what you ordered? It was a few other options. I took sandwich and a combination of two things. and. I got Milanese or something. I think it's very meaty, unfortunately, but we'll see. Maybe it's good meat. Yeah. Alright, let's take a bite. Really? Oh, well, these beans are so nice. I would like for the tortillas to be more crunchy. Apart from that, it's perfect. Oh, I gotta add some spicy sauce. Oh my, oh my god. god. <laughs> Sorry, I'm vegetarian, I promise you somehow. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to remove some. It's pretty good. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> the bread is not as fresh, but it's still very good. There's avocado. Not too chilly, so I'll add some more. Some chicken. I don't know what this is. I don't this know either. It's so spicy. Yeah, no, it's actually spicy. That's oh, alright. It's okay. Amazing. We got very lucky because we just walked into a place but then we looked at the reviews after we ordered and it had pretty good reviews. We are gonna just dive into this though because it's 2 p.m. and we're absolutely starving so we'll see you after the Ah, uh, Lunch was delicious. It was 150 pesos. 
150 plus a 20 pesos tip. So, so 170 pesos and it was really, really good. Um, very but local, very local. Very yeah. local. Also, right after we sat down, the whole place filled up completely and there were no seats left and there was a line outside. So we definitely chose a good place. We're currently in the historical center of Mexico City and right in front of us, we're walking towards it right now, is Bella Artes or Palace, no, Palace de Artes. Palace de Bella Artes. Something along those lines. We'll put it down here. But uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful building. But I discovered a really oh, wow, cool... I didn't even see it. We just walked past it. No, but I didn't see from the yeah. front. So I'm not going to show it to you just yet because I found a really cool spot to go and get an amazing view of it and it's a cafe that's upstairs. It's in a really weird location though because it's actually inside this department store right here. Okay. okay. I've been looking at the view. We just got our seats at the bar and we got our coffees. I feel like Rain Man and uh, a blind man just walking there. Can okay, I ready? Three, two, one. Wow, gosh, this building is amazing. It's oh, really nice. It's really beautiful. And you can actually go in that building. So it's an art gallery. Um, I think you have to pay to go in there. But I think the, the main draw card is the outside of the building. And this view in particular is just like you're directly on it. And you can see yeah. so much. And we're really lucky because Mexico City can be really hazy which means you can't really see very far often you can't see the mountains surrounding it and today it's a clear day oh my yeah, god we got so lucky today it's been a great day anyway we're gonna enjoy our coffees they're uh, not too overpriced I think they were 48 pesos each so pretty good considering the location yeah, yeah. Pay, for the location. pay for the view exactly Okay, that was a great way to have a rest and a coffee to give us a bit more energy. Oh, wow. So, we're just walking down like this main street. It's so busy, as you can see. There's so many people. But uh, it's in the historical center of Mexico City. So, Max just turned to his right and there's just this like crazy building right here. And you can see all the buildings here are beautiful. Metropolitan Cathedral, La Cathedral Metropolitana, and it's this massive, beautiful, huge church, right? It's like a cathedral. So we're gonna go inside and take a look because it was a very hot walk here, and uh, it looks really beautiful. This church is really big. Excuse me. Yes. Okay. This is um, where you can see it's on a massive uh, lean because it's sinking. You want to say that it's sinking? So apparently um, Mexico City is actually sinking. There was heaps of water resources underground so they've used those resources abundantly uh, because it's fresh water and unfortunately that's causing the whole of Mexico City to sink by 50 centimeters every year which is insane. That is so much. Well, that was a great day. A great day. Yes. Actually, we're just. Uh, actually, we just. Uh, <laughs> we've actually just walked um, to this beautiful park. And just one thing to note there is a lot of parks in Mexico City, and they're mm. all really well shaded. Like, there's so many trees. So, it's just so nice and beautiful inside these parks. But. We're naked, and I think that's everything we're going to do today. We're just gonna wander home. We're gonna wander home in the streets of Mexico City. Yes. It's so, much safer than we thought it was, guys. Just FYI, I was very concerned as a very protective South African ex. 
I think game. it's like anywhere. People get mugged or pickpocketed or anything in every city all over the world. And if it happens to you, then you feel very unsafe in that city. And so you tell everyone else that it happened to you and word spreads. And it's just one of those things, absolutely 100% it could happen, but I don't feel unsafe. No, well, I mean, we still on our guys, we keep hanging out backpack in our front well, park. Max does, I know. Yeah, I do. I trust people. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. Yes, we hope you enjoyed this one. And hopefully the information on how to get to Teotihuacan was really helpful for you. And if you have not subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe because it helps us grow so, so much. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye, guys. Buenos dias, gente linda. <laughs> Please don't bend over, I hear you. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> well, that has been... Well, that has been... <laughs> Hold on, your arm is too small, Shrike.